Well, it looks as if the ladies of Climax had more than one meeting in the ladies' room to kick some divas out of the group. Let's talk about All right, everybody out there, how you doing? Thank you guys so much for coming back over here and visiting me over here at Peppy's Point of View. I'm yours truly, Peppy. Welcome you new viewers, returning viewers, and you subscribers. Thank you guys so much. That's right. We're talking about R&B divas over here mainly, and I am reading Joyce Fenderella Irby's book, I Still Say Yes. Joyce Fenderella Irby is a former member of the group Climax, and this is her book. It pretty much talks about her life and also her, her experiences in the group of Climax, I Still Say Yes. Oh my gosh, this book is a good read. I am reading this book because I don't know anything about the ladies of Climax, so this is my opportunity to, you know, figure out, you know, pretty much what's going on behind the scenes in the group and just to get Joyce's take on what's going on in the group. Again, this is just her take on it. It's her, you know, perspective about it and so on and so forth. It's a good read. And I'm at the point now where she's pretty much, you know, she's handing her, she's handed her walking papers. They have kicked her out the group. We're going to talk about that. What led up to her being kicked out of the group. Yes, she was definitely voted out. All right. And there was a meeting. And according to her account, they didn't even tell her. They kicked her out and somebody else told her. They voted her out and she was, <laughs> according to her, then was told, you know, hey, it's what it is. The ladies have decided that you're no longer in the group. All right. Let's talk. I'm not reading everything in this book, but I'm here to tell you, go out and get it yourself. I got this book. It's, uh, it's available at Amazon. OK, so go to Amazon and, and purchase the book. It's a great book. Get it. I got mine in less than a week. All right. So let's talk. By the time we wanted burn out, she had already removed herself. I believe she saw herself as a solo artist early on, and now it appears that she felt like she had enough career equity to make it a reality. I believe she could have made a bigger, more sustainable move had she waited for at least one more album. I've always respected her creativity. Byrne needs to be captain of her own ship and seemed uncomfortable in, group, in a group setting where people considered themselves equal. The committee was coming for me next. I was happy and growing, yet had never ignored my responsibilities to climax. I've gotten to know many top executives at my at the major label, excuse me. I was developing talent in Atlanta, having many meetings and recording around the clock. I started spending more and more time with Gerald Busby, the head of MCA Records. He was interested in me as an artist and seemed to like the music I was pitching to him from my production company, Diva One. I was more, I was more hip hop adjacent than anybody else in the, uh, in Climax. So Gerald, offered me a deal as a solo artist. Remember, my first record as Fenderella had me rapping and rhyming, not singing. At the, at the same time, there was something new and exciting in the works in the music business. Gerald was going to take over as head of Motown Records and replace Barry Gordy Jr. If I took the deal, it would be a fulfillment of another dream to be an artist on Motown. When Gerald first approached me with the idea, he made it clear he didn't think I should leave Climax, and I didn't want to. I like being in a group. He said he had some of the same, he he said he'd do some of the same things he was planning with New Edition to have members record both as solo artists and as a group. If one person has a big success, it helps the whole group while they continue to work together. Well, Lynn, Lorena, Cheryl, and Robin would have none of it. 
In the spring of 1988, Climax was offered only a few spot dates, and I was the only one doing much outside the group. And while no one else seemed proactive, I thought we all had an opportunity to expand. You never know how much time you've got to shine, and you really have to, to drop it while you're hot. But the girls seem to have a problem. The girls seem to have problems with me doing anything, even while they appear to be doing very little. I recently sat and talked with Lorena, and she explained what she remembers about their decision to kick me out and perform again in Japan. The other place I said I wasn't going to go back to under minimum wage conditions. You were flying all this time, so now that we have a show to do, why do we all of a sudden find out about this solo project? We thought. So maybe she's trying to stay behind. And if she's going to do that, she will put our ability to work in jeopardy. Then she can do her thing and we can still do our thing because we were supposed to leave two weeks before. And then we had to try to struggle and find somebody else to do the show. So that's what we thought. We'll just let her go and we'll carry on. Then I was told the trip was in jeopardy unless they had proof that I was going with them. So they asked for my passport, which I provided. So the gig wouldn't be canceled. I never got my passport back. It would have been simple for them to do the same thing we did for Lorena when we thought she was going to keep us from working. Get a temporary replacement, an obvious solution of compromise, but the same rules weren't applied to me. In order to save their climax deal, I agreed to come to a meeting with them and the labor exec at execs at MCA Records. The execs asked the group a question. I'm paraphrasing here. If you're offered this deal, we want to make sure it includes everyone in this room. Does it? Of course, I was in the room. At least one of the girls uh representing the committee audibly said yes, and the others nodded to confirm that they weren't planning to kick me out. I knew that if I hinted I didn't want to record with them, it would cost them their deal and the big advance money they were depending on. Once again, I acted to protect my tribe. There was so much tension between the remaining girls and me, I thought I'd make one last overture. We were used to, to we when we used to tour regularly, no matter how much money we made, we were paid a weekly salary. It used to be $400 a week. Then it went up to $600 a week. The first week in October, I arrived back in Los Angeles, having driven once again from Atlanta to L.A. I met with Sweeney that night at 9 o'clock. My notes say, had a nice meeting with Sweeney. During that meeting, I offered to pay the committee their salaries for one or two months while they were waiting for the deal to go through. I added, I have handed out unearned label credits in order to motivate others to expand, and I was getting tired of it. Later that week, I got a call to come and meet with the group. I believe it was Friday, October the 7th, maybe some progress, I thought. When I arrived, the committee was in the conference room, and I was in the lobby. By the time I got into the conference room, they already exited out another door. Sweeney told me they had voted me out of the group. The end. <sighs> you know, this climax story is very interesting. It's almost similar to that of In Vogue as far as In Vogue's member, Dawn Robinson, being voted out the group or offered a deal that she definitely was going to refuse. And as a result, we have her exit here. And also to Dawn Robinson of In Vogue and Joyce Fenderella Irby, if you follow the Climax story and the In Vogue story, then you know that these two divas, Dawn Robinson and Joyce Fenderella Irby, were working together, even if it was uh, them just touring together. But they were actually trying to do some things together pre, you know, all the stuff that happened in, you know, 2019, 2020, you know, that stuff that kind of shut down everything. So anywho, so they was working together as well as with uh, another funky diva of Invo, and that would be Maxine Jones. And 
I just kind of noticed that these two stories are similar because Dawn Robinson said that she was also in a, a room <laughs> with, you know, some execs over at, um, I guess, Electra Records. And pretty much they were saying, hey, you know, does this deal that we're about to do? No. In Dawn's words, I think it was, are there any ulterior motives? Do anyone else have any motives as far as, you know, being in this group. In other words, Dawn was definitely working on an outside project in the process of working on her solo project. So that would be the other motives probably. Like, hey, you know, are you going to be able to commit to this In Vogue album that we're in the process of recording? Can you commit? Can you give me a two-year commitment? And of course, Dawn was like, no, I'm out the door. You made some promises to me. We're definitely going to keep them. No, it's not happening. And so when you look at this uh, Climax story, it's kind of similar. Bernadette Cooper is the founder of Climax, okay? She's founded the group, and for the most part, uh, Joyce Fenderella Irby, she comes in latter uh, part of the group. Anyway, long story short on that, Climax released three albums before they had their breakout hit, I believe it was in 1984, and that breakout hit, well, of course, was Meeting in the Ladies' Room, the name of the album, and the song Meeting in the Ladies' Room, as well as the Men Are Paws, and definitely the single that put them center stage, if you will, would be I Miss You from that album that was also written by another member in uh, Climax, Lynn Malsby. Anywho, long story short on that. So what we're finding is, is that from that moment onward, the ladies of Climax, people are definitely paying attention to this all-woman band, okay? And Bernadette Cooper, she's now producing other artists in the group. She's now uh, uh, discovering other, you know, groups such as Madam X, who has a hit uh, song out uh, called Just That Type of Girl. And so she's going into that direction, being a producer and a songwriter. And then you have... Joyce Fenderella Irby, who's pretty much doing the same thing. So these two ladies obviously are busy outside of Climax and definitely making moves, if you will. Now, what we see here with these ladies is that it looks like Bernadette Cooper is leaving the group. Why she's leaving, I'm not going to really speculate on that, other than it's probably her just wanting to branch out and do more things creatively. I don't necessarily have Bernadette Cooper's account of what happened, so I'm not definitely going to speculate on that. I would also like to think that it sounds like that Joyce Fenderella Irby, according to her book, is saying that they want to keep Bernadette Cooper out of her own group, but she leaves before that could happen. Allegedly, there are definitely some things that are going on in the Climax camp as far as the ladies are concerned, that they feel like Bernadette Cooper is stepping on a lot of toes. And that sounds like literally and figuratively speaking. And literally speaking, meaning that, you know, she, she has her persona, I would call it the grand diva. And she's pretty much as, she's kind of like all over the place on the stage. And it looks like it's almost about to be a hazard for her and the other members on the stage because of her antics and the things that she's doing. And again, it's kind of taking the spotlight away from the other ladies. And so that looks like this kind of behavior is what's definitely is about to get her kicked out of her own group. So anywho, so she's branching out doing that and she decides to, you know, exit anyway. OK, and it looks as if Bernadette Cooper has a lot of things going on for herself. You know, now that I think about it, Sylvia Rohn, who is also looks like she's a part of this climax story and the way this climax story is dividing up. She's also part of In Vogue and this In Vogue story is dividing the same way as the climax story is dividing. That's kind of interesting. And that's kind of telling. I mean, definitely is. I just don't know what it is. And it, it looks like Sylvia Rohn's name is definitely not in this as far as, you know, her, you know, having some ideas about how this band should be. But she's definitely somewhere around this climax story. Anywho. So it looks as if the ladies of Climax, how can I say it? I just find it hard to believe. Hindsight, 2020. You know, you can say a lot of things now when you're looking back, but I would like to think that there just looks like there's no way that you have two members of the group who looks like they're doing a lot of things outside of the group. 
okay? Moving and shaking. And then you have other members in the group who looks like they are probably pretty much content with being in the group and the things that are going on in the group and the success they have. Let's just say they're not offered a lot of dates here in this particular story in 1988, but it looks like, you know, for this month, the dates that they do have, they're pretty much okay with it. It's going to pay them what it's going to pay them. They're cool with it. It sounds like that they're working to in their eyes, they're okay with the money that is being given to them, similar to the involved story. And so it's kind of like when it's okay with us, you know, you other two probably you have have ideas about what you want to do in your own individual's career. But right now we're really and truly focusing on this climax thing. Climax is our bread and butter. Okay. So I can see how the other ladies of Climax can look at it and say, Joyce, you can't be, you, you can't do this. You're, you're hindering us. Now, here's another thing that I don't think people are understanding. This is just me, you know. How loyal should you be, you know, in this particular situation? So let's just say we go out. All right, Joyce, we leave you. We leave you to be what you're doing. You're out. You're moving and you're shaking and you're doing all these other things. And let's say we we'll allow you to do that. Let's just say you, you, you're cool. You know, we can say, oh, well, Joyce, you know, she's still a part of the group. But, you know, she got other endeavors going on that she can't commit to this show. But we have a uh, 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 Susie Q. Is going to be the basis. We got one or two things with this Susie Q. As the same thing with the involved store. I'm here to tell you it's very similar. Some promoters could be like, wait a minute. You want us to pay you what we're going to pay you. And the person who's not showing up in this group, her voice is on two of your biggest songs in your catalog, which would be I still say yes, and I miss you. And you mean to tell me that the people are not going to miss Joyce being out there on that stage? Like, what happens? Like, we have a whole lot of things going on. Let's say, for instance, you know, that comes up and, they, and the promoters are like, no, we're, we're definitely where Joyce. We, we, y'all, y'all, we need Joyce. I understand one of y'all could sing the song, but... People are probably wanting to hear Joyce sing it and see Joyce sing it. So it's not that simple, number one. Number two, let's say Susie Q does come out <laughs> and she comes out on the stage and she performs. And let's just say Susie Q sings I Miss You and I Still Say Yes. And just literally, I mean, the whole crowd is like ecstatic and excited like they never heard I Still Say Yes or I miss you, son, the way she sings it. And let's just say she's also a bass player as well. Let's just say. And so she's doing these temporary dates. Do you not think that somebody somewhere is probably going to offer this lady uh, an opportunity to be in the band and then you'll be upset as well? So having a replacement to just replace you and then... <laughs> Come back and say, oh, okay, everything's cool, you know, okay, thank you for the opportunity, so on and so forth. Like, I would like to think that that person coming out would probably say, this is my opportunity. Like, I'm just not going to come in here and sit down. Like, I'm going to come up here and show everybody what I got because everybody is paying, maybe people are not paying attention to me, but this is my career, so I need people to pay attention to me, you know. So that's interesting that that didn't, you know, that. You, we will allow that to happen. Same thing similar with, you know, all the other stories. You can think about the temptations. Like, that's just so many. Who is it? Um, I think maybe Drew Hill. Like, there are a lot of groups. It's not just this group who have these kinds of issues coming up. And it's like, you really think at the end of the day, someone is going to replace, not replace you. You're irreplaceable. Either way, I'm leaving. I can't be replaced. It's temporary. You can't replace me. Oh, I'm here to tell you, I, I don't know. I don't know. Looking back at this, it definitely does look like there will be an issue in just that. But let's talk about these solo opportunities, or let's just say these opportunities outside of the group climax. So we got Bernadette who, you know, again, Sylvia Rohn is presenting opportunities to her. Sylvia Rohn is presenting opportunities to um, um, Joyce. So you have that happening. 
And let's just say Gerald Busley, even though he's going over to replace Barry Gordy Jr. at Motown, but you have to also keep in mind if he's in fact saying to Joyce, hey, I'm going to offer you this uh, solo opportunity, you know, just to record a solo album. But I also think that you should leave this group climax and you agree. But at the same time, you don't think that these other ladies are going to feel kind of salty in a ride by sort of way that you're doing a solo project. I'm just saying, you know, that's that's kind of iffy. Now, when I think about it, and this is just to any artist out there, any artist out there, period. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm saying this. If you're in a group and somebody somewhere offer you a solo contract and you're going to take it, go ahead and leave the group. <laughs> I mean, for ease, I would just go ahead on and leave the group. You know, just say like, hey, I have the solo opportunity. I don't know if it's going to work or if it's not going to work. You need to be prepared. If this doesn't work, you know, your solo opportunity, you leave a major group like that. Just go ahead on and just exit. That's all I can just, 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 just buy. But anyway, but it's interesting also to see that what we have here is that we have these solo projects in the works. But then they have all of the ladies together in a meeting and asking them at the same time, can you all commit to this project? You know, it's, it's almost like these executives have their hands in the splitting up and the coming together. All right, here's a prime example. And we're going to use the latest, for example. Gerald Busby, I really and truly don't think that you should leave, but I'm going to offer you a solo contract, you know, and it's going to be over here at Motown. Now, keep in mind that the latest of, of Climax, they're on MCA Records, all right? Okay, why do I bring that up, that... uh are they on MCA Records? Well, but here's what I'm going to say. The latest of Climax, their last album, The Max is Back, is on MCA Records. Bernadette Cooper's solo album is also on MCA Records. Okay, so where am I going with this? It looks as if these same executives who are helping them get solo deals are uh, the same record executives that are coming back asking them, can y'all commit to this project as well? I would like to think that they're telling the people who they're not offering the solo contracts to. Okay, so George, she's leaving the group. You know, ladies, I, 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 I still think you can soldier on without her. Think about it. Somebody somewhere has to be telling them this as well. They're not coming up with this on their own. And if in fact they're coming up with this on their own, at the end of the day, they still have to go to the execs of the company, right? And say, hey, we might, Joyce probably won't be in this group. And if she's not in this group, can we still continue to go forward as a group like can we still make this happen so on and so forth what does that look like and i'm sure the executives of these record companies are probably saying well yeah i think we can make it work what do you guys have in mind while they're still meeting with them knowing that hey that's you you know i i just don't understand <laughs> for the life of me, why people now think that these things can work out for them. <laughs> you know, nobody wins. No, nobody definitely wins. And I'm really looking forward to really getting now. I'm about to get into the knit and the grit of this book because George Fenderella Irby definitely has a story to tell. Like there's a story here because as I told you before, she was working with Dallas Austin. She was signing him and there was a whole lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that, you know, some people came in and they weeded George Fenderella Irby out. OK, and I, you might want to stick around because I'm definitely going to talk about that. I can't wait, but I just want to wait before I get this account here first to see to add my two and three cents in it. But so that's what I'm saying. And it looks as if and, and you also have to think about it. Luel Salas Jr., this guy, he's the guy who founded Salas Records and he supposedly is the one who discovered Shantae Moore, all right? He's the guy, 
uh, who started the record, his record label, and of course, you know, discovered Shantae Moore, so to speak, you know, or let's just say he's the one who, you know, helped Shantae Moore get her uh, album up and off the ground. Now, if this guy would have stayed with MCA Records, all right, and I'm going to stop here. If he has stayed with MCA Records, I think that the Climax album, uh, the Maxis bag, as well as, um, jo um, excuse me, Bernadette Cooper's album, uh, Drama According to Bernadette, and several other uh, artists over there during that time in 1990, 1991, would definitely have had a lot of success had he stayed. But we're talking about MCA Records. They're going through executive changes over there at this time. And you also have to keep in mind that, you know, we're, we're also talking about the Andre Harrells and all that stuff, who was pretty much about to come into play over at MCA Records. And as a result, the change uh, of the music change over there at MCA Records, the, 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 the way in which, you know, the artists that they're going to sign and package, that's changing. So these artists right now, if Joyce Spinderella Irby, well, if Bernadette Cooper had waited another album to set herself up, as Joyce Fenderella Irby is suggesting, I don't even think we would have drama according to Bernadette, you know, which, by the way, is a great album, you know. But as again, Luel Salas Jr., he has made an exit out of, you know, the uh, MCA. He's not there. And there was a whole, as a result, a whole lot happened just with that guy leaving uh, MCA Records, okay? Maybe I'll talk about him one day. I don't know. But anyway, so that's pretty much it. You know, I try to keep these videos down to uh, 30 minutes. So I thank you guys so much for uh, tuning in over here. And if, in fact, you are watching this video up to this point, then I think it's very appropriate for me to go ahead on and ask you guys to hit the like button, the share button, the comment button, all of that. You know, just, just do all of that. You understand what I'm saying? And uh, definitely subscribe. You know, I'm working on a lot of things over here. And I appreciate you guys so much for uh, all of your support. I really, and truly do. Over here, I definitely believe in you putting your behind where your heart desires to be. In other words, if you want to sing, baby, sing. Get your microphone in your hand and sing. You know, sing your heart out. <laughs> if you want to write, get your paper and pencil, get your computer some and just get the writing. Write your heart out. I'm here to tell you. Whatever it is, put your behind where your heart desires to be. And also remember, whenever I leave my mother's presence, she always says to me, she says, baby, remember, I love you and God loves you best. And on that note, I am definitely looking forward to seeing you next video. And until then, you know what to do out there. You guys take care of yourselves. All right.